part of the organization. And um, without those efforts, we certainly couldn't achieve what we do. So um, whether you're a volunteer, a three time undergraduate, an EAB ambassador, uh, a volunteer board member, uh, a volunteer strategic advisor, um, however you contributed to the Ethan and to the Urban Forest Movement, thank you so much for your efforts. And uh, we look forward to continuing to, to work with you in 2013. There's lots still to do. Um, I also want to mention uh, and thank our funders, without whom we couldn't do the work that we do. Uh, the funders that uh, specifically enable us to uh, implement our volunteer programs, and those are Ontario Power Generation, Live Green Toronto, York Region, the City of Markham, Streets for Tomorrow Fund, Toronto Hydro, Evergreen, and the Canadian Tree Foundation. Thank you so much for your support. And I think that uh, we do have a City of Markham rep here tonight. Nori is here. Nori Takata. She's in contact. And are there any, any other funders here? Just Evergreen. <laughs> Thank you so much for your support. Um, and then we have other partners in the room as well. Partners that we work with on um, projects uh, that enable us to again, do the work that we do and without your help and uh, expertise and time, we couldn't do that. So thank you so much. Um, tonight is doubling a little bit. Uh, I think everybody in the room probably knows that uh, we are very sad to be losing a uh, key member of our team, Amanda Gong. <coughs> our amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, started out as a volunteer coordinator and has evolved into many other roles. Um, I don't know how we're going to get along without Amanda because she's been such a pillar for me for the last four years. Um, yeah, it's, it's very, um, we're very sad. We're really happy for her because she's moving on to an exciting job with Greenpeace. And uh, she will be putting her many, many talents to work um, to continue to uh, try to help our earth. And that, that is very exciting. And we look forward to seeing all the amazing things that she does there. I think the only thing that gives me any comfort is the fact that we have Jessica, who, if anyone can fill the, the huge shoes that Amanda is going to need, it's her. And uh, I think most of you know Jessica. And if you haven't already met her, you will soon, because she's going to be taking over um, as the contact for our volunteers. So um, it's a sad moment to say goodbye, but also a happy beginning for Amanda and Greenpeace, and we're excited to see all the amazing work she does there. Um, and finally, it is uh, my great pleasure to be able to introduce a special guest tonight. He's going to say a few words of inspiration for us. Um, probably needs no introduction because I think most of you probably know Mark Cullen. Uh, you may know him from his uh, media days with Canada AM, Toronto Star, and Society News. He's a very trusted uh, public figure. He's a gardening expert. He has uh, really taken on the cause of urban trees and urban forests and has really stepped up as an amazing volunteer this year and just been tireless um, as an advocate for our urban forests. And he started um, something called the Toronto, or sorry, the Trees for Life Coalition. And uh, LEAF has been part of that, as have all the other organizations based in the GTA that are working on tree issues. So he's brought us all together, which is amazing, because we don't um, get the time sometimes to, to coordinate our efforts. And I think that it's making us all stronger. And uh, he has been a tireless advocate. He continues to be that. Um, and it's my pleasure to welcome Mark Lund to the stage. Wow. I don't know how inspiring I'm going to be, but I do want to say thank you very much for the invite, Janet, and uh, I'm here to thank all of the volunteers with LEAF, but before I get to that, I want to tell you a story. I was in Calgary on the weekend, and I want to tell you that uh, winter has arrived in Calgary. It's minus 14, and when I was leaving on Sunday late in the afternoon for my flight home, 
Uh, they had what they called flurries, which anybody in Toronto would define as a storm, a, a true 100% winter storm. And I can tell you, it took an hour and a half just to get through the ice. And it reminded me of snow and how the volunteers in this organization and the other members of Trees for Life can, uh, there are 12 of us. And by the way, I didn't do that. I didn't bring the 12 uh, members of Trees for Life together. What I did was I, I identified, or they identified themselves as people who had a common interest in planting more trees, maintaining the trees that we have, celebrating our urban trees. And I said, well, why don't we all get together on the same board for one day and see what happens? And they volunteered to do that. And so the credit goes to them for making whatever's happened so far happen. And we'll thank TRCA and Deborah, thank you for helping to facilitate the next step, which is working with the Ontario uh, uh, Green Infrastructure, Green Infrastructure Ontario, rather, uh, organization. How I said all that, where I was going to the stories, this is snowflakes. Ever feel like snowflake? You ever feel as a volunteer that perhaps your efforts are not really meaning anything? Because as a volunteer, I sometimes feel that way. I volunteer to chair this organization, and not every day is totally fulfilling. But I want to say to you, and I want to remind you, that if you take enough snowflakes and you put them together, you get an interesting mass that's really quite powerful. And what I sense in Toronto and the GTA and other urban centers, like for instance Ottawa, which by the way has expressed an interest in joining Trees for Life, uh, Trees for Life, that's Trees Ottawa. But together, the snowflakes in this room and a whole lot of other people that are dedicated to doubling the tree canopy in Toronto are creating a quiet avalanche. Give yourselves a round of applause for that. You deserve so much more for the work that you do for LEAF. Because what you do for LEAF, you do on behalf of every citizen of Toronto, every resident of Toronto, and for those of you working in the market with the GTA. I want to mention that because what you do in your efforts to replant trees, to maintain trees so that the trees that are planted actually grow and mature into the canopy that we all dream Toronto can have, by the way, the Toronto tree canopy now is around 17%, it was around 40% back in the 60s. So the effect of ignorance, the effect of lack of action has been dramatic. And I think that the effect of our action together will be equally dramatic as time goes by. Mark my words, as we, as we continue to work together to make this happen. And the thing I want to remind you about is the real meaning of your work. The real meaning of your work extends way beyond the environmental reasons why we love trees. We know the environmental reasons. They don't have to repeat any of them, like producing oxygen and sequestering carbon and filtering toxins out of rainwater and blah, 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 all the other stuff. You know all that, right? But what about health and wellness? We now have, for the first time ever, quantifiable evidence that says that a healthy tree canopy in our urban spaces makes us healthier people. It reduces the causes of cancer. It reduces.